you doing? <laughs> doing well. Uh, you know, just your, your first few months here, how's it been? Uh, it's been a whirlwind, you know, just getting in here. Uh, obviously losing seven coaches there and, you know, from the last staff and trying to catch up in recruiting. And Jimbo and uh, Lawrence and, and Rick and Odell, they've done a, a fantastic job kind of holding the recruiting class together. And why the rest of us just kind of jumped in. So it was uh, it's definitely been a whirlwind. Yeah, what, what's been, what was your first impression, when, whether when you saw your defensive roster or, or just watched tape? And what was the first impression of what the defense you had? There, there's some good players in there in the draft. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously, if you were out here yesterday, you saw that. You know, having 13 guys, I think that was the most of any team in the nation that was invited to the combine. And uh, I've been fortunate enough to be around some good players, but there was there's more kids from Florida State that were invited to the combine and uh, than any other school in the country. So obviously, we lost some good players. So that was that was one of the first things that stuck out was seeing those guys. But you know, Florida State's always had good players and will continue to have good players and you know we just got to figure out who they are what was your relationship with Jimbo he said he's known you obviously for I guess a long time going back to you know his days recruiting from from Hoover when you were there I guess and maybe even before what was your relationship with him before he ended up coming here well just you know I'm a former high school coach so and I handled the recruiting aspect when I was at Hoover so the guys who came in I obviously you know, built some relationships there and and uh, just, you know, met Jimbo through recruiting and, and whatnot. But there was there's never really been a, a close relationship, just an acquaintance. Did you know uh, Charles Kelly well before he was? Uh, you know, actually I did. Uh, you know, Charles coached at Jacksonville State up in northeast Alabama, which is where I'm from. And uh, my brother actually at one time was a graduate assistant there, not not with Charles, but with, me and Charles knew a lot of the same people. His dad's a former high school coach, so uh, we've got a lot of mutual friends. And when he was at Georgia Tech and I was at Alabama, our staffs were close. You know, obviously Al Groh was the D coordinator there and Mike was on our staff. So, you know, we kind of met together a lot and shared ideas. So just having those relationships have, have kind of helped this? Oh, definitely. And, 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 and very fortunate, you know, to be my first time to be a coordinator to have the guys that I have around me. You know, Odell Hagens, what he's done speaks for itself the last 20 years he's been at Florida State. You know, Sal's one of the best uh, D-line coaches there are in the country. You know, spent seven years in the NFL. Uh, knows the system that we're trying to put in. And uh, Charles is very familiar with uh, the same system. You know, the, the, the kind of family tree that he learned it from is the same that I learned it from. So. Uh, it's been an easy adjustment. The big, you know, the big deal is one thing about us is we don't cheat at Florida State. At, at some schools, they they do a little more than 15 spring practices, and uh, we've done it the right way. So today was our really first day that we kind of saw our guys out there, and, and uh, just kind of got to go from there. When you got the job, what what was your process? Did you watch all the film from 2012, see what you had, see what was coming back, and? Before I t but after you took the job, I'm sorry. No, I started recruiting. <laughs> right, right. I started recruiting. But I, I kind of, you know, I, I think me and Jimbo talked about it. Maybe it was December the 15th, somewhere in there. And uh, and when I talked to Coach Saban, obviously we still had the national championship game. So trying to, you know, do my part there, plus kind of get ahead in what we're going to do in recruiting here get familiar with some of the players because we obviously wasn't re recruiting all the same players. Right. So I just tried to familiar, familiarize myself with the guys we were recruiting here at Florida State. The players that were on the roster though, did you go back and watch film with them uh, and see what you had to work with? Not until <coughs> recruiting was over with. Obviously you do quality control every off season and you want to go back and, and, and what we're doing defensively, we're not, we're not coming in here and just changing what Mark done in the past. I mean, obviously it worked. He bi he built on it from the time he was here. And uh, with the quality control that we've done, we, we found the things that we felt like that they'd done really well last year. And obviously we want to continue to do those things. And uh, so while you're doing that, you do see <coughs> players, you kind of, some guys jump out at you. But, you know, right now, if you look who was out there today on the field, there wasn't, besides the defensive line, there's not a whole lot of guys who have been major contributors in the past because we've got some injuries and whatnot, but uh, still there's some speed out there and some guys who can run around it. And 
and as spring goes on, I'm kind of anxious to see how these guys develop. Can you talk about Lamarcus Joyner and having that guy and the move from safety to cornerback, kind of how that played out, what that's going to do for you guys back there? Well, it's it's really an experiment just to, uh, you know, he wanted to do that. Uh, it was as much his idea as it was anybody's. And, uh, and, I mean, I guess you could talk to him, but probably he feels like that he's got a chance to market himself a little better by, you know, he's, he's been a good player at the safety position, but but he was a high school corner. And, uh, you know, him choosing to come back for his senior year, you know, showing that he can play out there on the perimeter, plus, you know, it's safety because, you know, in the NFL they only carry 48 players or ever how many it is, I don't even know. But it's not a lot. So the more positions you can play, the more value you create in yourself. Coach, throughout your uh, coaching career, who are some coaches that maybe you look up to that you might try to emulate defensively? Well, most coaches, they don't invent anything. They steal and learn from somebody else. And I've been fortunate to be around some good people. I would say one of the first people would be my father. You know, he's, in high, he's a high school football coach and extremely successful. But, you know, I, I had an opportunity to play for Coach Stallings and uh, it, Bill Oliver. Uh, was at Alabama as a defensive coordinator at the time. And then, obviously, uh, I, I was in contact with Bobby Johns, who at one time I think coached here in uh, maybe the early 90s. Uh, and then, obviously, my time at, you know, at Alabama with Coach Saban. Two, two questions. Uh, a lot of high school coaches don't want to make the jump to the jump you made because he might be a hard time working your way up. Can you talk about that process and how many coaches went to bat for you at Alabama to kind of kind of get your get things going for you? Well, I, you know, I got passed up twice. I mean, I, I, I actually, you know, Nick gave me an opportunity, you know, to uh, join the staff, but it, uh, there was a need there. He had been in the NFL. You know, took the job on January the second. He needed some help with high school recruiting in the state. Had never really recruited the state. I'm a former player at Alabama. I, my dad's a high school coach. I was coaching at one of the better schools in the state, and uh, so I, I got an opportunity. But while I was there, we had several coaches who left, and uh, he didn't he didn't promote me, and uh, for whatever reason. And it's like I told him. I mean, it's it was his. Show it's my job to prove to him that I'm the best guy out there for him, and uh, but he did give me an opportunity the third time, and I'm very appreciative for it. Um, but I mean, on paper, to outsiders, it looks like you made this like rapid rise, but you feel like you paid your paid more than paid your dues, I guess. Well, I, I'm, I'm very fortunate to be where I'm at today, and uh, you got to have some luck in this business, and uh, you. There's one thing that, that Coach Stylins told me, you know, 20 years ago. He knew that I wanted to be a football coach, and he, he the one advice he gave me was to make sure you stick with good people. And uh, I've kind of followed that philosophy and been fortunate enough to be with good people and, and uh, been fortunate for it. Is it good to be back with Sal? He said, you know, when he first saw you, he really um, thought that you were going to be someone that um, would really develop into – Great coach. So is it good to be back on Saturday again? Oh, definitely. Sal's a friend, you know, and uh, uh, a lot of times it's, it's hard to find friends in this business, but he's a friend of mine, and uh, I, obviously I coached his son the uh, last two years and really enjoyed that, and we're very close. But definitely, Sal, Sal there's never a dull moment with Sal. <laughs> All right.